I've come up to um, Sharper Tour this morning. Um, forgive the uh, provocative title of this video. Um, it doesn't actually mean or doesn't actually stand for what it's supposed to stand for. Um, where's the fog? Good question. Um, I've come up here this morning to, well, on a whim basically, and a, a strong forecast of um, a fog. At the moment, I can't see much, to be honest. There's a bit in the valleys over in the west. Um, the sun's just about to come up, so um, who knows? It's quite windy. Um, but the conditions are good, albeit very cold. Um, things are looking fairly promising the higher I go. So I'm gonna go and get set up and see what I can get. Well, I've come up to one of my um, favorite vantage points up here. Um, I've been here loads of times before, but you can see in the background there, that's Leather Tour, and I'm stood on um, Sharper Tour. Um, uh, there is a bit of mist, fog, over in the, the valley building up there. Um, normally with, with landscapes, it's um, you can watch the forecast, you can cut and twitch as much as you like, but sometimes it's best just to come up and, and see what you can get. Um, if you see in the distance there, I've got Burrator Reservoir. Um, if you want fog and mist, it's best to be um, above valleys and especially where there's water. Um, like I said, despite the um, despite the video title, uh, I must admit, what the f <laughs> am I doing here? I could um, could be in bed still, um, but I'd rather be up here to be honest. It's um, it's nice. Now I've done the little walk at the top. Um, I've just got to wait now and see what happens. Um, again, with landscapes, it's hit or miss sometimes with the conditions. So the sky's looking good, conditions are good. So I'm going to set up, and um, I think whatever I get this morning is going to be great. So let's see what we can do. I've set up here on my. Uh, my foreground interest which is this big rock in the foreground and um, makes a great foreground subject I've shot here quite a few times um, with all the distant hills in the background um, where's the focal point uh, can you see what I'm doing now with the title um, where do I focus on a shot like this well with a with a wide lens I've got the 17 to 40 on here at the moment so um, my, my foreground, if you like, starts right on this rock. And I focus on the third. So what I'll do is I'll show you the back of the camera in live view and I'll show you the, the focusing point. And this is a very basic focusing method. Um, either this method or um, there's another way I do this with, especially with this lens. Uh, it depends what lens you've got, but I use a depth of field scale as well to focus. I can easily focus this lens without even looking through the camera most of the time. Right, it's all I've got to do. It's got like that and that lens is focused. Um, this is great if you're, fo um, if you're photographing at night um, and you obviously can't see uh, your foreground interest or where to focus. Um, it's great to know, or get to, get to know how to use your depth of field um, scale on your lens. Um, so I'll show you the back of the camera uh, and where I'm focusing for this particular shot. I've got my live view up. This is my composition. Uh, nice composition. I've got this um, this foreground interest on the third there, got a nice bit of uh, the reservoir in the background, still no fog, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, nice slither of sky at the top. Now, I've got these grid lines on my focusing screen here, this is in live view. Um, now these are a handy sort of guide to obviously composition, but also for where to focus as well. Um, so I can move this cursor on this focus line, or on this, sorry, on this, um, on this line of the, the grid line here. Um, I then press my magnifying tool, this one here. 
Now that will zoom me in by five times or ten times and then back out again. So normally if I go into five times, I then use, make sure your lens is on um, manual focus and then you can basically zoom in and you can see that coming in and out of focus. And again, if you want to zoom in a bit further, you can. There you go. So that's my focusing done. Make sure the autofocus is turned off because if it's kept on, what normally happens is when you go to take the picture, when you press the shutter button, it'll zoom through the picture and focus probably in the middle distance somewhere if, if your focusing point is set to that. Uh, wherever it's set to, it'll, it'll focus through and it'll lose your focus. Um, now, aperture-wise, what's the f-stop? Now, the f-stop for this particular picture is f16. Now, I've chosen that because I want uh, front to back sharpness, so I want sharpness from the rocks right through to the distance there. Um, now, you can employ a, a technique called focus stacking. This is something that I'm going to go through at a later stage because it's, it's, a, it's a bit more complicated. This is a basic, um, basic focusing technique. Um, I'll also show you the, uh, the, te the technique with this, with this particular lens um, in a bit. The sun's just popping over the horizon now, so I'm going to take a few frames. Well, I look like I'm about to raid a bank, let alone um, take some pictures. Well, the sun has literally just popped over the horizon um, because it's quite clear um, and I'm shooting directly into the sun. Um, within within a couple of minutes, it pops and it's it's gone, the moment's gone. So it's best to get prepared and get um, get the shot that you want within those those first couple of minutes. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around now, so I'll make the most of the light, it's nice warm glow with this light this morning it's beautiful um, so I'm going to try another couple of compositions while I'm here um, and see what I can get and then I'm gonna have a cup of tea oh, look what I found nice little tree um, came up here in search of fog and found myself a tree um, it's one of those things you know the fog didn't materialize or hasn't yet um, it seems to be in the distance over there so probably, uh, I don't know, 20 miles away from where I am. So I'm going to go with what i got. I've got this nice little tree here. Um, we'll see what this turns out like. Tea time. What a great morning. Um, I do wonder sometimes, I sort of question myself why I do this, why I get up at stupid o'clock and clamber around in the dark just to take a couple of pictures, visit places that I've already visited God knows how many times. Um, but you come up on mornings like this and you sit here and you think, it's great, you can't beat this. It's um, I do like the solitude, it's nice, it's quiet, it's um, away from the city and the, the noise and the bustle and it's just it's just nice to come out and, and experience this. Um, to me, photography has always been about uh, actually getting the image, actually setting up and, and finding the shot and taking the shot. Um, the actual results are a, are a bonus. Um, Obviously, I try and sell the the results to make a make a living from it, but um, ultimately, that's that's what I enjoy is the is is the, the sort of chase for that image, if you like. Um, anyway, enough of my waffle. I'm gonna finish my cup of tea. There's a few more shots here that I'm gonna get before I go, and then I'm gonna head out onto the coast. I think because it's looking pretty good out over there at the moment. Um, fairly short day still so uh, because we've got this nice winter light it's uh, nice and low all throughout the day so it should be good why 
by the filters. Let's see, WTF again. Um, why do I use filters? Well, um, I've used them ever since I started photography, especially in the film days. Um, I use them to control the light rather than colour it. So um, most of the time um, it's, it's to control contrast in a scene. So if you've got a bright sky and a darker foreground, it kind of bridges the gap between the two, especially with a grad filter like this. Um, I tend to use graduate filters, um, ND filters to extend exposure, um, and a, and a polarizer. A uh, polarizer, I don't use it all the time, just occasionally. I like to try and get it as close as I can um, physically in the camera rather than um, fighting about with software, basically. Uh, to finish off um, this morning's shoot, I've spotted a tree, another tree in the distance. But this one looks like it's overlooking the reservoir, so it might make a nice, um, a nice composition. I can't resist this light at the moment. It's still really nice and warm and very good for for landscapes. So I'm going to take a walk down here and see if I can set up a, a shot. Wow, what a way to end a morning. Absolutely fantastic. Always good to show just the, um, just about when you're in that sort of mindset to sort of give up and go back to the car. It's always worth walking that extra, extra mile, going around that next corner. Now this is a really good end to the morning. Um, couldn't have asked, asked for a better shot. This has kind of made it worthwhile, the trip, the whole trip this morning. Um, so I'm off on the coast now. Um, enjoy these pictures uh, from this morning's shoot and I'll see you on the next one.